In this video, I want to cover the main ways we can give storage to a virtual machine in Windows Server 2012 R2, really for the purposes of shared storage, so cluster storage. So we're familiar with the basic idea that as part of a virtual machine's configuration, it can have one or more VHDX files, or VHD files in the old days. So here I have sort of the operating system disk connected to the SCSI controller. Now the first type of sort of shared storage I want to talk about is actually iSCSI. And this has been around for a while now. The iSCSI initiator could actually be installed on very early versions of Windows Server and now it's built in, uh, sort of Windows Server 2008 and above. The iSCSI in initiator is just part of the operating system. So I can go in here, type iSCSI. So this is nothing to do with Hyper-V. This is just using the IP connection of the virtual machine. And I can specify an iSCSI server, so the iSCSI target, and then connect to specific targets. So right here you can see I'm connected to a single iSCSI target. And I would connect to this same iSCSI target on each of the nodes in this guest cluster. So each virtual machine would connect to the same iSCSI target. So this would then be seen as just shared storage. And if I look at my cluster disk two, I can see I have a 75 gig iSCSI disk. And likewise, I would see that in disk manager, I just see this 75 gigabyte. It's actually connected to the other node right now. But if I actually went into cluster manager, so I can see the owner node is FCO2. So I can do is actually move these all to this current node. And then we'll actually see a different view inside Disk Manager. Then you can actually see, hey, this is the iSCSI disk. So this is just visible with shared storage. I can make it a cluster shared volume. It requires obviously your storage to support iSCSI and you're using your IP networks. You may have a separate network for iSCSI. But this really has the benefit of it's completely invisible to Hyper-V, but it does mean any backups you take at the Hyper-V host is unaware of this storage, it's not gonna replicate in any way. Uh, any checkpoints or snapshots you take are not gonna include anything on this iSCSI. But this was the only way to get shared storage in really pre-Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V. So in Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V introduced virtual fiber channel. And what virtual fiber channel enables me to do is create these virtual SANs. Now I have two fiber channel HBA ports. They have to support NPIV. So I create two virtual SANs, one to each of my two HBA ports. So like an external virtual switch, a physical network card can only be bound to a single external virtual switch. The same way a fiber channel HBA can only be connected to a single virtual SAN. So I'm creating two virtual SANs for each of my ports. What I then do on the virtual machine is I go ahead and I add fiber channel adapters. So I've added two fiber channel adapters, one connected to virtual SAN one and the other connected to virtual SAN two. And the idea is each of those HBA ports on my physical server will be connected to different fiber channel switches. So it has redundant connectivity. So there's no single point of failure. You'll notice each virtual fiber channel adapter has two sets of addresses, a set A and a set B. And it's these worldwide port names that we care about and that will be actually zoned on the switch and to the storage. And the reason we have the two is that in a live migration, the whatever name isn't being used can be used on the target host to connect to the storage so it's ready when we do that live migration so it avoids any interruption. So I configured this with two virtual fiber channel adapters connected to two separate virtual switches that connect to separate HBAs, which go to different actual switches, which have redundant paths to the SAN itself. And then once again, if I jump into that virtual machine, this just surfaces as a virtual fiber channel disk. Now, originally you would actually see sort of four copies of that same storage. So it's important you install the MPIO feature we go. And the MPIO would allow me to go into my discover multipass, select it, 
click add and it would find it, but I've already done that. So it knows this NAD app already has redundant paths and it shows it as a single instance of the storage. So you, you wanna make sure you do configure MPIO. And again, I would do this on all the nodes in this cluster. So I have this two node cluster in my environment. So I run and configure these adapters on both the nodes. So I have failover cluster 01 and failover cluster 02. Each of those virtual machines, so if I look at my second virtual machine, you'll see that also has two fiber channel adapters connected virtual SAN 1 and virtual SAN 2. So all of these worldwide port names would actually be zoned to that storage. So now again, this is now viewed as shared storage. I can use it for cluster shared volumes, anything else. Windows Server 2012 R2 introduces a new option. And this is, I can actually now take a VHDX file, again, connected to the SCSI controller, and I can now actually now make it a shared disk. So you notice one of the advanced features is enable virtual hard disk sharing. So you'll see this is connected to cluster storage, shared VHDX, SAV, DALFC, shared one. If I look at my other virtual machine, I have exactly the same disk. And again, I have to make sure that's configured for virtual hard disk sharing. So now this single VHDX file on my file system is now connected to, in this case, two virtual machines simultaneously. And once again, I see in Disk Manager, and this is my 25 gig shared VHDX file. And as far as clustering is concerned, it's just another shared disk. So I have all three of these different types. I have my shared VHDX, I have my iSCSI, virtual fiber channel, all of them usable in exactly the same ways. It just gives you different options. The huge benefit of shared VHDX is the underlying fabric. I, I don't need to know about the iSCSI. I don't need to know about the fiber channel adapters. Shared VHDX, I just see a VHDX file that I connect to multiple virtual machines. But to all intents and purposes, all three of them are accessible and I can use them in my environment. I can always check actually for the shared VHDX, which disks are shared. So I'm getting my VM hard disk for one of the nodes in my cluster. And you'll notice the one that's shared actually shows as supports persistent reservations, I it's a shared drive. So it shows this disk is actually being shared in the environment. And that's it. Just a very quick overview of really those three main types. So iSCSI, virtual fiber channel, shared VHDX. And of course I could use SMB3 as well, depending on the workload. That's another way to get a file level sort of shared access. But if you need a block level, that's gonna be this iSCSI, virtual fiber channel, or shared VHDX. And that concludes this video. Thank you.